everybody, I'm Dominic Amoroso from SMEDIY.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a multimeter, but on a very basic level. We're not going to get crazy involved in showing you know, all kinds of you know, just you know crazy stuff that you'd really have, need to go to school for. Uh, so we're just going to show you some DC voltage, AC voltage, ohms, and uh, resistance, you know, continuity. The simple kind of stuff that you would actually uh, be watching this video trying to learn. Uh, real quick though, I mean, look at all these, these multimeters here, right? And they range from an auto ranging uh, to a manual ranging. And now, just a little tip, when you see a lot of uh, selections on it, well, that's generally going to say that it's manual selecting. So you have to select the range where you have something like this, so it has a lot less uh, in, uh, indicators on it. Well, that because it's auto ranging as as well as this one here. See, it's a lot less, and it's auto ranging. Uh, where these other ones, you have to select it. Now, it's not one's better or different than the other. It is just different in what something that you may want. You may not want an auto ranging because you want to actually select because you know for sure what that resistance or voltage should fall under. So again, it's you know now which one's the most expensive one? Quick guess. Bam, 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 bam. Actually, this one would be the most expensive one. Uh, but again, I use this one for more of uh, DC voltage, so we can, I mean, uh, AC voltage, I'm sorry. And this has the amp in induction uh, little clamp there, which it shows in handy, which I will show you. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones here. Now, it is, uh, yes, it's a less expensive um, of a multimeter. I mean, we can go uh, for a higher end, the, the yellow brand, I call it. Uh, and you can spend, I mean, up to say four or five hundred very easily on something that does the same exact thing as this one does. Um, but you know, we're not looking for real, for what I'm doing, we're not looking for real sensitive readings. So uh, a multimeter like this works great. All right, so let's get going. I'm going to show you the first one I had to check for DC. Hey, check it out before we do anything. Our black lead is going to go to our common. Our red lead is going to our input. Now, if you see, you have all different kinds of settings on here, and this is where we want it. This one's over here. This is for amperage. If we're checking uh, amperage. Uh, we're checking for, uh, so you can see, max 10 amps. This is where we're going here, and so forth. But we're not going to get crazy involved in this because uh, a lot of the multimeters have different settings, different ratings, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, I can show you guys a couple different ones. Like here, look quickly on this one. This one only has three. This one has four. The other one's three, the other one's four, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Anyway, DC voltage. So now let's go and select, this is right here, our slide here, for our DC voltage. Now we have uh, millivolts. We have, if you look at the range here, so I can give you a close-up of it. It's a 6 volt, 60, 60 volt, 600, and 1,000. All right, well, we're going to test a battery, a little 1.5 volt battery, which we know is DC. So it's not going over 6 volts, so, oh, so we're good. We know that. And that's where, like I said, the, oops, hello, the auto range really uh, would help you if you didn't know. I'm going to check the voltage just like that. And you see we have 1.6, so it's, uh, hey, energizer, a little extra. Now, let me just show you when you do this so people don't ask me the question. You want to flip it over. We want to do it backwards. You can see the, well, kind of hard when I show it. You can see the negative right there. Well, obviously, it's not negative. It's just you just have the leads reversed because it's DC, a direct current. And that's what you got here. Now, let's say we change it to 60. We know this is not 60 volts, right? And you can see how the decimal point moved over more. And I do actually have it, had it backwards there again. Not that it, not that it matters. You're still going to get the same reading. Okay. So that's where the auto ranging goes. Now we can go and we can select for our our ohms. So let's start this one next. Okay. Now we're going to check this wire here for an ohms resistance. Now you can see our wire here. We have you know a regular household wire. Now we're just going to go from one white wire to another and see if it's connected and we do. Uh, you know, you can also just test it by tying the two leads together. And, you know, you get the, the same reading here. Boom, boom, boom. Which is just about zero, which means 100%. Now, let, here we have an actual resistor. Now, if you have a resistor and you want to find out uh, 
what resistance it is, uh, the colors, the bands on the resistor would actually tell you that. But again, we're not going to get crazy into that. So let's just read this. Now this I know is a 1K uh, ohm re resistor. And basically that's what we got going here. Now that's just to check resistance. Now this wire was way, way, way longer. Of course it would have a different reading. As well, if you're checking any components on a circuit board, you're not going to be able to do it on the board, you have to pull them back, you have to pull them out of the board to do. That's not nothing. Now let's do continuity. Now on this multimeter, here's our continuity right there. And you just hold the wires together and you can see. And this, this meter actually is pretty cool because it actually shows, uh, it has a buzzer and it shows the lights on it. Same way if we go back to this wire here. And that's what we're checking for continuity. Continuity, making sure that we do have a connection going from one end of the wire all the way to the other end of the, of the wire. And of course we do because you can see it, but suppose it was something where you really couldn't see. Well, that's when we need the multimeter. Now let's get into uh, checking AC voltage. Okay, let's check for AC voltage here. Now if you see on our multimeter here, we have a le different levels, uh, settings for your AC voltage. 750 volts, 660, down to 6 volt. Now, we know we're, we're checking for line voltage in the house, so it should be between, say, 115 and 120 something. So we know that's above 60, uh, but below 600. So we're going to go right to 600. And I have a, a cord here. I'm just going to check it out and see what we got. And we have a 121 volts, 0.2. Now let's just say we drop it, we move the meter, we drop it down to the next level. Oh, we don't even get a reading on that. But suppose we went up the next one. Now we're just getting the 121. We're not getting the point, you know, if, so if that was important to you. And that's, that's for AC. Okay, now suppose we have one of these gizmos. This is a, uh, you know, a little transformer for whatever you want it, you plug it into. This, the output on this one is uh, 12 volt uh, DC, okay? And that's in, uh, you know, got, it's 100 milliamps. So, I mean, psh, not very uh, strong, and you can definitely short that out because of the milliamps on that. So if you wanted to check something like that, again, uh, set your selector to DC and put your connections on, and then go in there separately, something like that, and you would get a read. Obviously, it's not plugged in. What else can we test here? All right, now let's check for amps. Now this is, amps is, you know, power being drawn, kind of like, um, water through a skinny hose to a big hose, okay, so amps. So we're gonna go to our amp selector over here, and I know what we're testing is AC amps, so I have it on AC, uh, shown by the amp, uh, AC and the amp reading here. And we're going to 10 amps. We know it's not milliamps, uh, so you know, cause what, what we're doing here. So what we wanna do is move our red wire, and we're gonna bring it to our 10 amp lead over here, which is important because you don't want to start blowing things up. Now, this is the one place where you can really start uh, uh, damaging stuff. Okay, So we have our wire coming in, our AC wire, which is live, and it's going to a little uh, blower motor. Now, to show you this, I had to cut the wire in half because to check the amps, we actually have to cut the wire, connect the wires, to, the leads to each end of the wire here, so that's running through our multimeter so we can get our reading. So let's check this out without getting shocked here and see what we're doing. So we're pulling 8.3 amps just on that little motor there. Now, like I was showing you uh, earlier in the video, I had that other uh, multimeter here. Now, this is what I use you know, for doing electrical work when we have a breaker that's tripping perhaps because we don't have to cut the wire. And lots of times, you, you know, you really, you couldn't if it was in the wall or something. So in a case like this, which I will show you, I'm gonna connect these wires back together. We're gonna go right over the wire like that. So let me connect these okay. and show you. Get our meter here, we select it to our, our amps, this, and this is for a, AC, this whole meter here. So what we're gonna do, I wanna turn the motor on. It's gonna get a little loud, because you know, watch. You know, so you gotta get a zero reading, a reading here. Turn it on. <laughs> And 
that's how you do it with an inductive meter. Now you can get a clamp, an inductive clamp here, that actually plugs into a multimeter, which is probably not a bad idea. Now, one more feature I want to show you. Now, not, not every multimeter has this. Uh, this one does, and I like it. It's probably why I use it the most. I wanted to show you. All right, this multimeter, it actually came with a uh, little thermometer probe. We just connect it uh, to our multimeter, as shown like this. And we'll select it, go way down to our Celsius or Fahrenheit. And we actually have the probe here. So if I hold it tight, you can watch it go up. If I put it outside, you know, you know, what do you need this for? It's actually pretty good when you're checking components. And what area is heating up or so on a circuit board. Um, something that may be malfunctioning, drawing too much current. And you're not sure by feeling it, you can use one of these. Uh, check the refrigerator, our freezer, whatever it may be. We can go from Fahrenheit, use a select button. Uh, we can go to Celsius, um, which I'm in the USA. I don't use Celsius too much. Uh, another feature, um, I had a little light on it, but uh, the hold feature. Now, a lot of people say, well, what's the hold? What are you holding it for? Well, suppose you're checking for ohms or you're checking for voltages, things like that. Uh, you know, instead of writing everything down and you want to you know, compare it, you can actually uh, hit the hold feature and it will lock that in. Not when you're doing uh, temperature, or, you know, but you can like, you know, hold it like that. It's, it's held, so now you can examine it, write it down, uh, just compare notes, things like that. But not every one of them has. Uh, another one, uh, actually made from the same manufacturer, has one. Uh, here's another one. I do not have a hold feature. Uh, this one, nope, don't see it, and certainly not this one, which I need to turn off. Uh, one little tip when you're buying a uh, multimeter. Now, you don't need to spend a ton of money on a multimeter. I mean, if you need to spend a ton of, mul uh, ton of money to buy a multimeter, let me tell you, you shouldn't be watching this video. You should already know what the hell you're doing to even spend that kind of money on a, on a multimeter. Uh, but when you're buying the, uh, the lesser, ex you know, the le least expensive ones, uh, again, you know, you get something like this. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's like 20 bucks. This might be uh, under 50 or somewhere in that area. Uh, whatever maybe I'll leave you a link to this one, which is uh, one of my favorite ones. It's got the lights, it's got indications, sound, you know. For the money, it works good. So when I'm using it and I drop it and I break it, I just go buy another one. Um, we also want to touch on uh, auto power off. Now, even a little one like this, because, you know, I mean, come on. I, I leave mine on, like, all the time. They never go off. I mean, unless I'm really paying attention, and chances are, if I'm testing this, I'm doing this and doing that. Maybe on another side of the building, or whatever it may be. So, I always leave it on. So, auto off is something that you could really find in uh, most of them. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically it. All right, well, that's some just basic, basic functions on multimeters and different ones, you know, maybe be a little, uh, I'm hoping that it helps you give you a little bit better idea of how to use a, a multimeter. Now, the only, the, the best way is, is to read the book on it. A lot of times they come a lot, a lot more information and you could just read and, and experiment. I mean, you can experiment with a multimeter uh, just by using, re, checking out resistance uh, on something, you know, open something up that has a circuit board and take it apart. You can, I mean, it's, it's nothing you really can't do on it. You check your fuses, you check, diodes, resistors, voltages, amperages, uh, resistance, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a handy tool to have, uh, even checking a regular switch, uh, in a, a light switch, you can you check it with a, uh, using the continuity on a multimeter. Anyway, it was just designed to be a, a basic get you going uh, video on the multimeters. Hope you learned something. I'm Dominic Amoroso. Thanks for watching.